Hello everybody and thank you for joining tonight. This is your host Nino and on this last night of 2022 I shall be pleased to guide you into an experiment where we shall be trying out a chatbot which I came up with for a Kim One, a MOS Technologies Kim One computer a 6502 based machine and because these things are a bit hard to come by and a bit too expensive to break our experiment will be conducted on a Kim One Uno which is a sort of clone based on Arduino now tonight's experiment shall be to bestow this thing with intelligence <laughs> Or perhaps put more modestly to create a chatbot and operate a chatbot for a Kim One. This in itself is a bit of a feat given that the Kim One has one kilobyte RAM and you know whole thing is to be programmed in machine language and so on and so forth. So not only is it a chatbot though it is a learning chatbot and into the details of that I shall venture right now for before we try that out it should be clear according to what principles this is going to be operating otherwise the demonstration will be perhaps more puzzling than obvious so in order to operate somehow this chatbot will need some sort of knowledge and its knowledge is structured into what I call challenge reply pairs. The knowledge is separated in two halves and each knowledge element consists out of two sub elements. In fact, each one byte, a problem and its response. So all sorts of patterns here have known replies and when a new input is coming from the user then it is being compared to one of these known patterns so it's a comparison of one binary pattern to another and the closest match once it has been reached and you say hmm this looks sort of like that pattern then the system will output that reply and this is the way the system will be chatting with the user. So the user inputs a byte and the system tries to match that byte with the knowledge and it is going to reply with a byte. And that way the conversation will be conducted. However, the knowledge base is not stable. In fact, it is evolving with each and every interaction. You see, when the machine has replied to the user and the user then responds in turn then that last user response that last user input has been given by the human in return to the previous machine communication and hence this is something that can be learned you can say that and that machine communication should warrant such and such reply because that is what the human did and if the human issued such reply the next time we are challenged with that we shall issue the same reply and the knowledge base is basically going to incorporate this new exchange like on the left the last machine reply on the right the latest user input into its knowledge base and because the knowledge base cannot grow beyond limits, in fact it's only 128 uh, pairs long, the whole thing is being shifted. The oldest challenge response pair is being forgotten, everything is being shifted, and the newest interaction is being implanted into the knowledge base. And that way, as we are chatting with the machine, as we're inputting bytes and receiving bytes in reply, 
the knowledge base will be more and more updated and will contain more and more of such pattern pairs that the user has been resorting to. It will, so to say, learn from the user how to reply with answer patterns to challenge patterns. So that's the knowledge base consisting out of challenge reply pairs. It is being evolved as the user supplies input. And perhaps last we should talk about how user input is actually matched against known challenges. Now there are multiple ways you can do that. For instance, you could be in particular counting matching once only. But in my case, my implementation is also counting matching zeros. So here, for instance, if these two entities would be compared, then we would be having a matching value of two because once these zeros are matching and once the ones are matching. Here we have no match. Okay, if you would disregard the zeros, that would be having a matching value of just one. But I regard the bytes as a sort of little brief property arrays, and therefore I say the zero is significant. Only one little trick was necessary in order to, actually two tricks, in order to get the thing run more smoothly, and that is to let the system, if possible, try to avoid a reply of zero. Okay, so otherwise, if you start here with the array, the system will have a certain tendency to match zeros, just like here. And you know, if everything is zero, 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 and so on, if the entire knowledge base is full of zeros, then you will get very often as a reply a zero, which is terribly boring and in a way unjustified because then the knowledge would be just pre-filled with zeros and that is because that is because something we must fill in there not because zero is such a good answer and therefore i have also implanted there one little evaluation tweak namely to let the system avoid replying with zero if at all possible i have furthermore resorted to one further trick namely i slightly pre-populated with a little bit more than a dozen um, patterns the knowledge base so we do not start with absolute zero and so that the initial conversation with the system is not quite so damn boring but that we rather have a possibility to um, get more interesting replies so that actually tells you also how this system is working in general. So it's actually two short programs. The one program slightly prepopulates the knowledge base and the other program is actually running the whole show, running the whole user interaction. And now I shall follow the part with the demonstration. We, given, giving our challenge under the binary address of 0010. That's a hex address, of course. So pressing AD, I'm going to 0010. And here I can input now a pattern. Okay. I'm going to input here, what shall we say? A4. Hmm? Let's say that's what we tell the system. We tell the system our challenge is A4. Okay, very good. Then we go to zero, uh, two, zero, zero, and at address 200 hex is the beginning of our program. We press go, blinks for a moment. It has now compared the knowledge array. And then again, we go to zero, zero. If you like, we can go to zero, zero, one, zero. So we told it A4. And now let's look at the reply. With a matching value of five. So it found five um, corresponding bits. Okay, the maximum is eight. It recognized A4 as F0. <laughs> That's not exactly a very good match. 
and the reply it gives us is O2. Okay, so A4 has been answered by the machine with O2. And uh, now I again can go to O010 and I can give it some other um, input. So I can tell it DD. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying DD and I'm going to uh, O200 and again I'm pressing go. Machine has blinked and has computed a reply. And again, I go to um, 0010. So let's look again. That is what we said. DD. That was our challenge. With a matching value of six, like six corresponding bits, it recognized DD as 99. And the reply is also 99. This is one of those preset pairs so that I don't get, you know, weird answers all the time. And again, I can now again go to 0010 and I can tell the system uh, 83 <laughs> for wrong uh -huh. 0010 DA. 80, 86. Huh? So let's say 86. And now again I go on 0200, trigger it with go. And again we have received a reply, which may, we may check again. So 86 is what I said. It recognized 6 bits. It recognized that it's 0, 2. I don't know how I did that. And the reply is DD. So, in essence, that is how this is working. And at the same time, it is actually learning these pairs. And we may now have a look at that. And, and see the challenge reply pairs it has been learning. This is under the... 0300 segment and specifically let us look at 03 and eh, what shall it be 03 um, this is super weird how it is synchronizing this 03 seven uh, zero let's try that Seven zero. Oh three seven zero. Very good. So if we go here you see that now it is no longer with zeros populated but with actually other figures and these are figures which it learned in this half of the interaction from our little discussion which we were having. And we can go again also, if you want to see the other half, we can also go to O3F0, okay? So here still we have zeros, this is like the normal memory before it has been populated through chatting. We haven't chatted for 128 exchanges, so it's normal to contain a couple of zeros. And here you can see already that it has learned replies, all right? And this 400 is actually not part of our program anymore. So that's all. In, in essence, I have been able to devise a chatbot for a Kim Wan Uno. <laughs> And I certainly do hope you enjoyed today's episode. I think this is about as low as a chatbot can get. <laughs> and I hope to greet you here soon again as a regular guests. Till next time. And from me, have a wonderful 
day and goodbye.